lad finding a dead body under our foundations hasn't dampened the neighbor's spirits. We hope Jason's all right. Yeah, I'll be fine. We better get going after we've had this. My mum's going to want to get home. I'll go pardon me, Nils. Watch you don't say that down the cop shop, or else I might get the wrong idea. Oh, shut up, David. Did they ask you about Jason? Who? Don't, David. We all need to be on the same page here. Yeah, they asked. Hi, there you are. Everything OK? Yeah, fine. Well, Gail's been giving me a running commentary. Kept you a long time. I think it's all right. Oh, yeah. Bethany's taking over now. And not before time. She has spent the last three hours on her phone planning a birthday party. And if I have to hear Lily play Row, 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 your boat gently down the stream on that toy radio of hers again, thank you. Oh, sorry, Gwen. Anyway, it's not about me. You all look shattered. David, look, go and get me a G and T, please. Then you can fill me in, right? I'm not ordering my dinner sat in a car shouting into a clown's mouth. See what? <laughs> Why don't we ask him now, Jace? The last thing this lad needs now is more bother. So you're trying to put me in a frame for this, are you, eh? Hey, Jason, everyone's been interviewed. We had to answer the questions the same as you. Oh, aye. So what do you say, David? Did Jason ever come round your house to ask him to call to dress? Mate, they've got chapter and verse on you and Callum. I mean, it's all on record. Yeah, they arrested him for beating you up, for God's sake. Oh, keep your nose out, Rumpole. Why are you trying to stitch me up? Oh, for goodness sake. Is this how crimes are solved these days, eh? People screaming at each other across the street. Well, man's right. Let the police do their job. Fine by me. As long as your psycho of a son doesn't try and lay this at Jason's door. And why would he do that? Your guess as good as mine. Oh, come on now. This is daft. The kids are going to be starving. I'm watching you, Platt. Nothing on TV, Norris? Nothing as dramatic as this, no. Uh, Sarah, I borrowed your charger. It's in the salon. I'll see you back at the flat, yeah? Well, I could have tied it up a bit. It's a murder investigation, not a 60-minute makeover. Yeah, well, I'll have it looking like home in no time. We're not going to be able to survive this. Yeah, we will. What makes you so sure? David, what makes you so sure? What have you told him? What? Who? You know who. Todd. What have you told him? Uh, David, take it easy. I told you I didn't tell him anything. I don't believe you. You've told him something. I haven't. What's going on? You've told him, haven't you? No, of course not. Sarah, start talking. David, I don't know what you're saying. Please, can you just leave me alone because I can't handle this. David, you're lucky your mum's not in. What do you think you're doing storming in here like this and spouting off? You're going to get us all hung. Todd has gone to the police. He's told them everything. What? Because apparently the person who killed Callum confided in him. I swear to you, David, I didn't. Tony did it. Tony? Yeah. Tony told Todd he killed Callum. Tony who's dead? Tony who hated him. Tony who converted the garage. T Tony who was hell-bent on revenge because Callum battered his son. How can Tony have told Todd he did it when he didn't? Well, exactly. And the police don't know that. But Todd does. Well, maybe he's just trying to keep his brother out of prison. His brother, yeah. And her. This is a good thing. Everything points to him. How can it be a good thing, Sarah? He didn't do it. We did. Right, OK. Hang on. He was here. All right? He had access to the garage. He had access to the manhole. And he could have got on Max's duvet thing from upstairs and anything else that they've found down there. And he did have a good reason as well. I mean, there's plenty of people around here who could tell the police that. We had a good reason, David. They're not daft. Tony's dead. They're going to think this is exactly what it looks like. A lie. A conspiracy. Yeah, and maybe. Maybe, all right? But right now, it's the best thing we've got. I washed it in hot soapy water and then I put it back in Tony's bag. Right, definitely Tony's bag. You didn't put it on the side or give it to Jason. <gasps> David, you ask me this every night. The second I get into bed, you ask me this. You know what I did with that wrench. Are you 100% certain? Yes, 100%. Are you sure she can't hear us? What, under that thing? No chance. She's half deaf in any case. Right, okay, so Tony's are the only prints they should find on it. 
If they even find it. Well, they'll know what they're looking for now, won't they? They'll be turning that place upside down. What are the chances of them finding part of Callum's skull on it? I washed it really well in, like, a ton of washing-up liquid. Well, it never was one for shifting, was it? I hope they don't find it. I'll take my chances with the wrench. Yeah, well, that's easy for you to say. You never touched it. Babe, listen, this has landed in our laps. I mean, we just have to keep smiling, that's all. We're almost there. Come on. What's the rush? I'm not in the mood for a sermon. Hey! Sorry, Reverend, can't stop. Oh, won't be a minute. I just want to make sure Sarah's OK. Why wouldn't she be? Because she was talking about coming to the funeral. I just want to make sure she definitely wasn't. Trust me, she won't be anywhere near the funeral. Good, because she just seems a bit fragile. So just make sure you look after her, OK? Of course. Kylie, wait! Oh, keep walking. David, I can't. I can't believe you're not coming today. It wouldn't be right, Gemma. Not after everything. But you go way back with Callum. Come on. David. I can't do it on my own, Kyla. You'll have Maka there. And plenty of other people. You'll get through. How? Just think of the good times. Like when? Like the time Scouse Dave chased me and you around the estate for hours. And Callum owed him that money. Yeah. It'd have killed us if Callum and Macca hadn't turned up. Yeah. With the fire extinguishers and the golf clubs. Ended up being a right laugh. Well, there you go. Just remember times like that, you'll be fine. Oi! Oh, oh are you happy now? What are your funeral, Macca? Kylie's right, there's no need for any trouble. Not today. No need for any trouble? But you said it with them that had Callum done in. I made a mistake. Oh, come on, let's go. Yeah, that's right. Run off, you little snake. But if I find out you did have anything to do with it, and if any of you lot turn up at that funeral today, I'll make sure you regret it. All of you. What did I tell you? I couldn't just leave her crying out in the street, could I? Well, she's not your problem. As soon as this funeral's over, the better it will be for everyone. Yeah, well, I've been thinking. I'm gonna have to have a word with Max about it again. What? Why? Because Callum was his dad. If he wants to go, one of us is gonna have to take him. Well, you heard him. We're not welcome. Why would you want to take him there in the first place? Because, David, if he wants to go, one of us has got to take him. And I'm guessing you're not going to be the one who's going to put your hand up. So what's all this about you going to the funeral today? Sarah? I spoke to Billy earlier. She was on about going. You've got to stay well away from there. Do you hear me? Davey's right, Sarah. Mum, could you help me with some revision? What? A revision. I've got an exam after lunch. Well, can't somebody else help you with it? Charming. Thanks for the support. It's all right, love. I'll give you a hand. Max? Yeah? Have you given any more thought to going to the funeral? Because this is going to be your only proper chance to say goodbye to Callum. What even happens at funerals, anyway? They're really boring, mate. Basically, all you do is you go to church, sing a few hymns, and then you put a box in the ground. David! What? Well, it's true. Will Carl's friends be there? Yeah, some of them. I don't think I want to go. All right, well, like your mum said, it's up to you. But if you did want to go, you'd be safe. Nah, you're all right. All right, well, let's get you back to school. Max, mate, are you sure? Because this is really important. Can't we say goodbye to Carl another way? Don't you need permission to plant something like that on the Red Red? David, we're planting a tree, not building a block of flats. It's still a public park, though, isn't it? It's up with you. Will you nip upstairs for a bit, love, please? Why? Uh, go on, love. Uh, then we can get on planting the tree, yeah? Where is she? I've been trying to call you. Why? What's happened? She's gone. Gone where? Don't tell me. I don't know for sure. I was upstairs with Harry. I came down. She was gone. I mean, I've tried ringing her, but she's not answering. Oh, Sarah, thank God you're all right. Well, I told you not to go. At least she's home safe now. That's all that matters. Are you okay, love? Oh, yeah, yeah, she's fine. Yeah, um, it was just really strange just imagining him, you know, in that box. And then 
Billy started telling his prayer about how if you believe in God, you're not really dead. Yeah, well, I doubt Callum had spent much time in church before today. And then Marion, she started talking about how he's alive and he's living through Harry and Max. Look, it's over now. Just sit there, I'll make you a brew. No, I need to go and see Billy and see what he meant. S Sarah, that's just stuff they say at funerals. I mean, have a word, will you? David's right. Will you not just stay here with us for tonight? She likes us at the funeral. Yeah, I mean, she doesn't seem right. And uh, Calm's mum turned up, started banging on about seeing Harry. And that copper turning up didn't help either. But the women investigating the murder. Yeah. I was there in a sidekick, sniffing round, watching everyone like a hawk. Sarah, please, look, just stay here with us. No, I told you I need to speak to Billy. Is she all right? Yeah, she's just a bit preoccupied at the minute, love. She'll be okay. How did the exam go? Good, yeah. At least we've got one brain box in the family, eh? Are you sure my mum's okay? Yeah, she's fine. Look, now Callum's in the ground, can we all just start getting back to normal, all right? That's a million dollar question, isn't it? She just seems a bit jumpy. They are trainers. Is it if the Maxes? Right, we'll go shift them because someone's gonna fall over. Uh how is that my job exactly? Because I'm washing up. She does though, doesn't she? Seem a bit. Mm. She needs to get over it. I mean, Callum's buried. And this time it's not in our annex. And plus, everybody thinks Tony did it. So thank you, Tony, for dying how convenient was that? David! What? Babe, things aren't what they used to be. You all right, love? Yeah, I just keep thinking I see Billy. Um, what's all this here? I just put some pictures together. I was just making a scrapbook for Harry. Oh. Oh. Well, you can't use that one of me. I look a bit brazen. And, um, and who left those trainers there? Somebody's going to break their neck on them. Do you die if you break your neck? Oh, um, well, I, I think you do. Well, you can do. In fact, there was a girl at our school who broke her neck on a dry ski slope and she survived. It's confusing, isn't it? Is it? us some lunch at the pub today. A special offer. Three courses, 12 quid. Mm, I bargain. Let's go take the kids. Have a proper Sunday day out like normal people. Okay, nice one. You don't have to worry about breaking your neck now, love. I've moved the trainers. But do they live? Do they die? Sometimes you just don't know. We didn't call the police. Oh, no, no, no. We keep Sarah away from the old bill. Look, I don't really think we should be having this conversation in front of the kids. What's going on? I'm so sorry about this, guys. Right, come on, we're going to go over here until we can find out what's going on. Come on. Why would she think that Callum's still alive? Because. And God knows why Billy's brother made out he was. Why on earth would he do that? I don't know. Unless she was imagining that, which I won't put it past her. Anyway, cheer me up. Tell me about your lunch. <laughs> we just got some sandwiches and went to the Red Wreck in the end. So is she all right? Where was she? David, come on, I'm not in the mood for 20 questions. I told you, she was at that Lee's flat. Look, will you just tell me what's going on? Is she not all right then? When was the last time she was all right? Did he... Did he touch her? No. No, nothing like that. But she thinks Callum's still alive. It's just such a shock. You know, I've seen her like that and it's... It's like we've lost her. But you can't say anything. You can't tell her that Callum's dead or... There's not been any of it. But that's mad. Yeah, that's what worries me.
afraid that she needs to see a doctor. What? I want what's best for her. Of course I do. But? Why is it possible, isn't it? I mean, for her, for us. Forget about us. She needs to get better. Yeah, I know, I know. We need selfish. It's just... I'm trying to protect all of us here. David, you can't pretend that she's not sick. But what happens when a psychiatrist starts poking around in her head? What if she tells him what we did to Callum? Stop him from getting in. Look, Sarah Callum is dead, all right? That lead bloke was just trying to scare you. Can you please just look after Harry for an hour? Uh, hang on, where are you going? Don't leave the house until I get back, OK? Just keep the doors locked. Sarah. Sarah, wait. She's lost it. She needs help. Oh, I'll get dressed, I'll go. Proper help, David. I told you, no shrinks. She thinks Callum's coming to get her. Yeah, well, we both know that ain't gonna happen, don't we? What are you gonna do? I'm gonna find her, bring her home, talk to her. Talk to her? David, she's having a breakdown. We can't keep covering this up. We're gonna have to tell Gail at least. No way. Come on then. David, you not finished the milk again? No. Well, that makes a change. Uh, you and Sarah have made up. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we did, yeah. What's it? Oh, Angel, come on. Come on, sweetheart. Yes. Oh. We're going to be safe now because Mummy's sorted it. See, there's nothing wrong with her. Why? What have you said? That she's lost it. David, they need to know the truth. What truth? Nothing, Mum. She's fine. Of course she is. Things have happened. Look, she's just a bit strung out, that's all. And last thing she needs is to hear us talking about her behind her back. I agree. Good. So conversation over. Uh, no. There's something you're not telling me and I need to know what. Billy's brother? Well, I take it he's not a vicar then. Oh, was she hurt? She's okay, but it really shook her up. Look, why didn't you call the police? We thought we'd best not to. He basically kidnapped her. I won't go that far. Well, it sounds like it. I don't understand. Why did she go with him? And why didn't you tell us? We're telling you now. Well, I'm not surprised she's shaken up. I mean, who wouldn't be? There's nothing abnormal in that. The point is, she thinks Callum's still alive. She went to his funeral. And that he's coming after her. Oh, don't be so stupid. Look, she's just got a bit confused, that's all. I'm telling you, Gail, she needs to see a doctor. Oh, you're making this up. No, we need to talk to Nick. Why? Because he has experience of mental health issues. Well, it's not mental health it issues. It is, David. I am not making any decisions until we've spoken to Nick. And your grand, too. All right, let's, let's just all calm down, shall we? Well, you're not talking about my mum without me there. Well, of course not. What have you done? She's your sister, David. Don't you care about her at all? Yeah, of course I do. She's got oh, kids, yeah, a baby. Yeah, and so have we. But if she confesses, then they're all going to lose their parents, aren't they? Well, that's just a risk we're going to have to take. Right. Are you sure she really believes that? Yeah. I see her every day and she hasn't mentioned Callum once. She thinks she's protecting you. Ugh. I mean, isn't it a bit dramatic? We've all had difficult times, been over-emotional, but men in white coats. No one's saying that, Gran. <laughs> Needing psychiatric treatment. Does mean you're a lunatic? Look, in my day, if you got upset and stressed... She's not stressed. <sighs> She's delusional. When Gail was a month old, I hadn't had any sleep for weeks, and I thought I saw Larry Grayson standing in my living room. It's not the same thing, ma'am. It sounds the same to me, Gail. There is nothing wrong with my mum. The signs were there. I should have realised. But how? She wasn't walking around talking gibberish. Oh, right. Like a cliché mad person. Oh, for heaven's sake. Mum, don't blame yourself. My own daughter. Under my own roof. It's not your fault, Gail. If you knew something was wrong, why didn't you say something? You had all the stress with Carl. Yeah, we didn't want to worry you. This is all such rubbish! You're just doing this to try and get at her. Eh? Huh? Well, you're the drug addict, the one who's mental. Bethany. 
You're just jealous of her. Jealous that she stole Callum from you. Right, hang on a minute. Jealous that she's a better mum, a better person. You just want her out of the way so you can go back to being Queen Bee like you were before we came home. But I'm telling you, that is not going to happen. Bethany, look, I know it might be hard to hear. You've got to understand, though. I love you, Mum. Mum, I just want to help. There is nothing wrong with her! Right, we need to go home. Now. Oh, sorry, I've only just got your message now. I've tried knocking, calling. She won't answer. Well, maybe she's just in the bath. Yeah. Gail, Gail, she changed the locks. What? You kidding? No. Oh, why would she do that? Sarah. I'll go around the back. Sarah, love. <laughs> He's coming. He's on his way. Mum, stop this. Callum's dead, sweetheart. That's what he wants you to believe, <laughs> Mum. <laughs> I thought that you knew. My love, you've had a stressful time. He's got you all fooled, Sarah. Sarah, why don't you just give Harry to me, yeah? No, none of you believe me. No, no, no. We, we do. We do care. We just, we just want to protect you, that's all. No, you can't. You can't protect me. Nobody can. It's OK. Right, can I have an ambulance, please? Sarah, why don't you just give Harry to me, yeah? Look, if Callum's after you, he's going to be much safer with us, isn't he? Yeah. I won't let anything happen to him, all right? He's here. Yeah. David Platt? Yeah, I'm the one that called. You best come in. That's Sarah. That's the baby. What's going on? Hello, Sarah. Who are you? I want to see if you're all right. Oh, you, you lied. You just don't believe me at all, do you? You're confused, sweetheart. No, no, they're confused. Callum's coming to get me, but they think that he's dead. He is dead. His body was found under our garage. Uh, he was her boyfriend, the father of a baby. It's been a very traumatic time. I, I think she's, um, she's just been sent over the edge. David, you were there. You know, you know the truth. She don't know what she's talking about. You helped him escape, didn't you? You've been helping him all along. Can I come and see if you're all right, Sarah? Oh. We're here to help you. Please, sweet. No, you know, you're in on it too. And they all are. They're all helping Callum. Can I just come and see if you're okay? Sarah. No, don't let him near me. Don't let any of them. You're perfectly safe. <coughs> Please, can you take me away? Well, we can take you to the hospital where we'll be able to help you. Tell them where I am because they'll let him know. I promise no one's going to harm you. Oh, you'll be well taken care of. I promise. I promise. <laughs> Thanks, mate. How are you? Bye. Yeah, he's going to pick up Max from football with Addy and let him stay over. Thought you were right about Sarah. Bully for me. I should have done something sooner. Look, we just have to walk. Whatever she tells the doctors, they just put it down to her being delusional. I don't even care anymore. Kai. We did that to her, David. Us. <laughs> well, me. Babe, you were trying to save a life. Callum was my past. Mine. Babe. Maybe I should just go and hand myself in. Don't talk daft. That way it doesn't matter what Sarah says. Kylie, you're gonna stay strong, all right? We both are. For the kids, for us, for Sarah. Do you hear me? You alright? I'm exhausted. It was up like 
five times. <clears throat> Think he knows? Yeah. He knows his mum's not here and I was a very distant second best. Yeah, well, he's probably better off with Sarah at the hospital. Do you really think that? Yeah. She'll get all the support then, won't she? When I saw them take her away, I just keep thinking the same thing. What? It's gonna come out. That one of us goes down and all three. Hey, no. Okay, the kids need you. If anyone's gonna take the rap for this, it's gonna be me. I'll claim self-defense or whatever. I mean, I'll, I'll be out in five years. No! You even think of handing yourself in and I'm gonna do it first, all right? That's a promise. I'm praying that Sarah gets better. It's just, I'm scared stiff every it's time the phone me. rings or the door goes. <sighs> Why is she in hospital? It's complicated. I'll get it. I know what that means. What? Stop asking difficult questions. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Is it to do with my dad? Ah, uh, yeah. But she'll be okay. Yeah, she's tougher than she looks, you aren't you, Sarah? They want to speak to you. All right, well, I'm here. Go on. Uh, I thought you might be more comfortable talking at the station. Why do they want to talk to you? It's fine. Um... No, I'm, I'm more comfortable sat here on my couch. I can look after the kids, babe. Right, well, let's go to the station then. Hey, I know things have been a bit messed up in the minute, yeah, but um, we're all just going to have to cope. So can you do me a favour? Yeah. Can you look after your mum for me? Yeah. David. I'll be all right. I'll be okay. You're just doing your job, aren't you? That's right. Yeah. Can you uh, say goodbye to Lily for me? Yeah, come in. Are you ready? Yeah, come on. Let's go. I thought you were going to do something stupid. I came to stop you. Why doing what? Are you mad? I couldn't let you go down for something you hadn't done. Anyway, it doesn't matter now. Jason's been here. Has he? Yeah, he's found the tool bag that I put the wrench in. He's handed it in. When? About ten minutes ago. Oh, come on, let's get out of here. David! You all right, mate? Have you been at the police station all this time? What's going on? I think, um... What? They think what? They think Tony did it. So that's what we're trying to work out when Callum left here and that. Where's your mum? Oh, Grand said she's in safe hands. I don't know why we're lying. It's all gonna come out now they've got the wrench. Shh, stop doing this to yourself. Look, you washed it, didn't you? So hopefully that'll just confirm to the cops what they already think. Yeah, but I didn't wash it in Miracle DNA Remover. If my fingerprints are still on it, I'm the one who hit him. There's nothing we can do about that, is there? We're just going to have to wait and hope. Find anything at all, it's just going to be your fingerprints on the wrench. Which we already told them, yes, we move the tools, like, all the time, so you'll be all right. It's not me I'm bothered about. You know, if I'd confessed, we'd be in the driving seat. It'd just be my neck, but now... Hey, nothing is going to happen, all right? We've just got them all down nerve. Try telling your sister that. Just got a few more bits together for her. You know, a Megs and uh, some makeup. Makeup? You think she's going to bag a doctor? Well, she's always taking a bride in her appearance, and it's just anything to make her feel like she's getting back to normal. There's no scissors or nail files in there, are there? Well, she's hardly going to be sawing through the bars, is she? That's not what I'm worried about. She wouldn't do anything daft. She's got the kids. Gail, she's not thinking clearly. It's better to be safe than sorry. We've got a visitor. 
You all right? Uh, look, I don't want to rush you, but uh, we've got to make tracks. Well, what's up? You okay? No. I've had some bad news. Thought you should know. What is it? The police called. I had to go down the station. They've had the forensics back. He's devastating. Uh, he'll get over it. Can hardly say the same about Callum. I don't know. The thought that someone you love could kill. It's hard to live with, and I know that. Depends on the person. Well, I'm just glad it's over. Come on, then. We've not got anything to say. Like what? Sorry? Practically accused me of being a murderer? I was in shock. I'd been sleeping on top of a dead body for months. Well, I thought you'd be used to it after Michael. Eh? <laughs> what? I don't get an apology or anything. All right, all right. I'm sorry. But Sarah has to be the priority now, so uh, I'll just get my jacket and get going. It's over. Well, I wouldn't put you bunting up just yet. You said it yourself once the shrinks get older, Sarah, she could say anything. Yeah, she could. But up until five minutes ago, she was telling people he was still alive. You know, she's ill. So even if she does say anything, it'll be her word against a mountain of evidence, forensic evidence. And that makes you happy? No, but it makes us safe. So I'll take that. But, babe, we've finally beaten him. I mean, we've won. We've won. An innocent man's name's been trashed. Jason's in bits. Your sister's in a mental hospital and I've got to deal with the fact. I killed a man. God help us if we ever lose. You're not eating them? I'm not hungry. I'm dreading this meeting today. I've had enough family therapy to last me a lifetime. I'll be all right. Do you really think that? She could have told him all sorts. Well, what did you say last week? It's just um, an informal chat thingy. So it's nothing to stress about. I'll be glad when it's over. Yeah, and it will be. Tonight, I mean, we'll get her on here and we'll have some spag ball and that'll be it. Be all done. I don't just mean today. I mean the whole thing. It's like... It's like he's still here. Callum. The sooner today's over with, the better. Whatever happens. Oh, yeah? Do you want some toast? I've got the marmalade without the bits in. No, thanks. Not hungry. Oh, um... Gail got Sally to print some of your CVs off. She got you looking for a summer job. Mm. Yeah. You gonna be all right handing them out? What, do I have to do it today? Well, the early bird catches the best work. Oh, fine. Do you remember when you were a kid and the summer felt like it lasted a million years? Yeah. Now it just flies by, doesn't it? And it rains all the time. Summer's just as rubbish as the rest of the year. Sarah, would you like to discuss how you feel your time in the ward's been going? Okay, um, it's been good. Hey, what's well, on? Stop worrying. Now, one of the benefits of having your family here for this meeting is that it shows you, Sarah, that you, you have a support network. Well, she knows that. Of course she does. We're her family. Yeah, but wouldn't she be better having a support network at home rather than stuck in here? No. No. I don't... I don't want to come home. Well, not yet. And do you know why that may be, Sarah? Um, me and Harry like it here. I like the, the gardens and the fish pond and where we sit. We have our feed, yes. But why wouldn't you want to come home, sweetheart? I'm sorry, Harry. It's fine. It's good to see how you feel. Well, it's not good if she never wants to come home again, is it? Having spent some time with Sarah, it does seem that her symptoms are typical of postpartum psychosis. What's that mean, exactly? It's a mental illness. Some new mothers will experience it. But it's not her first child. She's done it before and she was fine. She was 13, Gail. Yes, and she was a lot happier. This isn't about being happy or sad. It can cause mood swings, insomnia. Well, she always slept fine, even as a baby. Postpartum psychosis can also cause a person to hear voices or 
believe that someone is after them or poses a danger to the child. Is that why she still thinks Callum's alive? Possibly. But you mentioned new mothers get it. I mean, is it normal? What is it? Is it just hormonal? We feel there may be something else that has contributed to Sarah's mental state. Like what? Perhaps something before Harry's birth that Sarah's been worried about. Well, it's Callum, isn't it? What? His body it was found underneath my annex. It was horrible. Yeah, all right. What's important here is that Sarah feels comfortable enough with us all to discuss how she's feeling. She knows she can say anything to us. Is there something you're trying to avoid or perhaps ignore? We need to understand what you're thinking about. Please, sweetheart, if there is something, just tell us. Sarah, it's important that you know there's no pressure from anybody. Yeah, you don't have to say anything today. We just want you to know that you have our support. No, there's no pressure at all. Well, basically you're saying that if she keeps quiet, she can't get better. Is that right? Communication is key here, yes. And we just want you to get better, Sarah. We do. How are you feeling, Sarah? Don't know. I'm scared. Well, what are you scared of? What'll happen? Well, there's nothing to be frightened of. Look, the most important thing here is that Sarah gets better so that her and Harry can come home. Okay? Sarah, you don't have to be scared about anything. We just want you on the mend. So whatever you have to do or say to make yourself better, you do it. Okay? What are you scared of, Sarah? I'm scared of Callum. But he's gone, Sarah. Callum's dead. I know. I'm scared of his body. Well, that makes sense. I was sleeping on top of him for God knows how long. It must have been awful. Is that it, Sarah? Is it Callum you want to talk about? No. It's what happened before he died. I just, um, I wanted him to go, to be just gone out of our lives, and I, I thought that that was, that was like the only way, but... What was the only way? To set him up. To get him to admit to the bad stuff that he did. So I asked him to come to ours and he, he did he came round and um and go on if you can he got there he was he was really angry and he knew because he, he found my phone and um did he hurt you he, he grabbed me oh I was, I was scared I was shaking and I didn't know what he was going to do. <sighs> you don't have to carry on if it's too much. Please don't push yourself. I thought he was going to kill me. And I think he would have if, um... If what? He was on top of me. And, um... I was, I was screaming and... I, I just, I don't, I don't think I could get enough air and I just can't, I just can't get away from him and then Kylie, Kylie came, came in and What happened after Kylie came in? We're all here for you, Sarah. It's okay. I can see this is obviously very distressing for you, but I think it's really important that we talk about this. So you say Kylie came in. Can you remember what happened next? She 
shouting. There was, um, there was a lot of shouting. Uh huh. And, um, she was screaming, and I was screaming, and, um, I think, I think you pushed, pushed him off me. I, I don't know, it was a bit of a blow. Go on. They, uh, they started fighting. I thought that he was going to kill both of us. And then David came in and um, they, they managed to get him out of the house. They managed to get rid of him somehow. And they saved my life. Thanks for telling me all that. Well, we didn't want to worry you. What do you think I am, a child? No, we just thought you had enough on your plate. Yeah, you were stressed because Callum was threatening Audrey. You were with her that night, don't you remember? Yeah, we didn't want to scare you. All the more reason for telling me if you thought we could have been in danger. Oh, well, maybe we should and maybe we shouldn't. We made a decision. There was no going back from it. Did you tell the police all this? Well, yeah, told them everything. They never mentioned it to me. Well, they wouldn't to you. You weren't there, were you? It's just one secret after another with you two. I thought we were meant to be a family. Where are you going? I'm taking Harry for a walk. I need some air after that lot. I didn't start breaking it up again. She won't. After what she's just found out. Did you have a nice time going to see the fishes with Grandma? Yeah. I hope we've done the right thing lying like that, Sarah. Well, what did you want her to say? Well, at least it'd be out of the system if she'd come clean. Oh, right, so you don't want Mum breaking it up again, but you want her to tell the truth. You can't have it both ways, Carla. No, I'm, I'm glad that I did what I did. You saved my life. We stick together. How would you feel? Fine. Yeah, everything's going to be fine. Oh, OK. Well, uh, I am really proud of you. Thank you. I'll see you later. Hello, sweetheart. You after something? What? Being nice to Mum for a change. Did you uh, get yourself a job then? Uh, not yet. Oh, well, your Mum's had a bit of a tough day, so just don't go wearing her out, right? Go down for. I, mean, I don't think today could have gone any better. And you heard her. She said what she wanted. She feels better for it. It might just be temporary. Oh well, Kylie, the roof might cave in tonight. We might all die in his beds. What about Gail? What if she starts digging around again? Look, are we in a better position now than what we were this morning or not? And it was you who told her to say whatever she felt. And it's worked, hasn't it? I mean, what's it matter if it was the truth or not? Look, if you ask me, this whole nightmare is over, all right? Yeah. I'm re Max, shoes, now! Yeah, get back on the couch, put them on now. Have you brushed your teeth? Yes. For two minutes? I didn't time myself. That was so cheeky. It's gonna be late. Oh, do you want me to do the school run? Well, it's my turn. Yeah, I can get some fresh air. You chill out here. Get yourself a cup of tea. Well, I suppose I can be sorting the annex out. Where are you off? <sighs> Job hunting. I might cast the net a bit wider. What? Inkerman Street? Spinning fields. I'm perfect for Armani. I know loads about Italian fashion. I think you're more Poundland, aren't you? David. She's trying. Good luck. Give me that. Bag. Better think about going next door. Yeah, spotless in there now. I'll do these. Why not mine? You cooked. I will. Cooking, cleaning. Yeah, I'm house I know. You're great. Um, I've got a bottle of wine chilling. I think I'll take it next door. Hopefully it'll knock me out. What are you saying that for? Well, I'm just not relishing it. Where have you been? Jim. Fancy a can? I do appreciate everything you're doing, you know. But? Do you know, I've been thinking. I mean, this is mad. What is? Well, I mean, it's all been redecorated and the space and there's the ensuite. I just feel selfish. Well, it's a granny annex. It's not a boutique hotel. No, it's not like a boutique hotel. 
You could have it for a little love nest. No, we're all right as we are, thanks. Yeah, but think about it. I mean, if I was upstairs, then I could look after the kids more. And if they woke up in the night, it would not be me they came into. She has got a point, I suppose. We could hang a do not disturb sign on the door and not come out for a week. Hang on a minute. You were desperate to get in there before. I yeah, know I was. I'm sorry. It just gives me the creeps now, so please, can we swap? Well, as long as you agree to put the kids to bed. <sighs> it's a deal. Right, OK, come on then. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You are going to blindfold her? Gail! Look, it was just a joke, all right? Just for the big reveal of his photo. Oh, please, there's been enough reveals in that annex to last a lifetime. Right, David, you're quiet after three, so why don't you see if Nick will give you a hand fetching that dressing table? And did you manage to get rid of the rest of Gail's stuff? Yeah, gave her. Oh, not that photo of Michael. What? She kept a photo of Michael? Yeah, framed. Oh. We found it shoved behind a cabinet. Well, she says she's going to bin it. But uh, I thought you were at lunch. Yes, well, uh, Ken didn't feel like it, and I wasn't of a mind to stay either. Not after I put my foot in it with Freddy. Freddy, how? Oh, don't ask. I'll go and put the kettle on. Joe, what is it with all these old folks and fellas? You shouldn't have given that photo of Michael to go. Oh, no, stop moaning, will you? I mean, if she's that bothered about it, she'll burn it in the garden. Hiya! Shh! Is this your doing? Broken door handle? They're in there now. What, at it? Is that quick? No. I'm fixing the door handle, you numpty. Well, is it working? Is it getting on? She's done that with since minute ago, in. I told you, I didn't realise you were in there. I don't know whether I'm coming or going. I mean, it's obvious why you came back. Oh. Why don't you just say it? Damn! Did you see where that went? Tiny little grub screw about the size of an earring. Yeah. Don't stand on it! Well, do you want me to stand still or do you want me to look for it? I want it? you to look for it. You, you don't find screws ah. that size in... Ow! Oh! You found it? Great. Oh, I made for each other. Like Judy was made for punch. Hasn't broken the skin. You won't be needing the tetanus. Well, that's something. <laughs> Anyone else wouldn't have noticed. You, you're like the princess and the pea. You're too delicate for your own good. Is that why it's taken you a whole week to pluck up the courage? I mean, just say it. I want a divorce. What? You've barely said two words to me. I've just put two and two together. And made five. Divorce is the last thing on my mind. Do you want me to kiss it better? It's sweet. <laughs> Shall I kiss it better? <laughs> oh, I get it. National Laugh at Michael Day, is it? Yeah, very funny. My sides are splitting. Okay, okay, I broke the door on purpose. But you were in on it. Do you think I'm that desperate? Don't answer that. Oh, so you'd have to be desperate to want to get back with me. Oh, put your violin away, Michael. You were the one who dumped me for the Weatherfield bike. Oh, just shut up, the pair of you. Yes, okay, it was a stupid idea, but everybody knows that you belong together. Including Eileen. Who'd been a long time in the wilderness before me. Michael. The bike bit was... Oh, on. look, just let it go. Just stop being so pig-headed and just tell her. You've been eating your heart out. Yeah, and you've been cranky as hell. Well, say it. What's stopping us, Princess? Pride. Fear. Kiss it better. Go on. Am I seeing things? Yeah, something nice for a change. I've missed you, Mr. Rodwell. Missed you too, Mrs. Rodwell. Don't, don't mind me. Why don't we celebrate? Taj special, extra barges. Oh, our first takeaway was from the Taj. You had lambuna. Yeah, you had chicken korma. <laughs> I wasn't very adventurous back in the day. Yeah, well, I bet you've eaten halfway around the world since then. On takeaways, have you tasted Eileen's cooking? Um, I don't want anything, thanks. I've already eaten. All right, Michael, prawn fall, extra chilli, or extra hot vindaloo. Mm -hmm. Chicken korma. Variety is the spice of life, but all it did was make me realise that I like my curries like I like my women. Delicate and sweet. <laughs> mm. So, I said to Nick the thing about Leanne. Right, what do you reckon? 
<sighs> in the magazines it always looks great. Is it the size? No, they say random sizes, random colours. It's meant to look casual. Yeah, and take ten years off your life. I don't be so miserable. Maybe if we had a picture to compare it to. Oh, I saw one. Was it Jennifer Lawrence or Taylor Swift? No, oh, I can't see Jennifer Lawrence having the patience, can you? I think I've got one upstairs. Look, I was telling you about Nick. Yes, and Leanne, I know. They're getting back together. Well, we don't know that, but she's always been a bit of an head worker. So I said to him, look, just ask her. I mean, are you genuinely interested in her, or are you just treading water to some better come home? Oh, I bet he loved that. Yeah, well, he's not getting any younger, is he, Nick? You can't afford to waste any more time. Don't think of that, neither can I. Look, are we almost done here? I'm absolutely just down. I bet you wouldn't be saying that if it were Taylor Swift's cushions. <laughs> you did good today. Well, it's good to see Gail happy. <laughs> yeah, for a bit. And it just gets nauseating. No. Spend all morning over a hot toaster just so you could let it go cold. I'm not hungry. Where are you going? To my room. We'll just come back and eat it's some bread. Right. You can go. Oh, well, thanks for backing me up. Just go easy on him, will you? He's having a tough time of it. What do you mean? I don't know. He won't say it back until something's bothering him. Is it going to be alright to go to school? Yeah. I'm doing good to see his mates. I was thinking after I dropped him and Lily off, I might head into town. Oh, I what for? I'm going to take some of them cushions I got for the annex back. I'm not sure about them. Well, yeah, they were a bit poncy. Say he's the big macho hairdresser. Morning. All right, girl. No milk. Perfect timing. Well, I found a use for you, then. What are you up to today, love? Uh, not much. Might try job hunting and then go to the gym. But the gym again? Got somebody in there you fancy? Who is it? Dev? <laughs> eh? Go on, you can tell us. I won't take Mick, honest. Leave her alone. I'm only having a bit of fun, Mum. You've forgotten what that's like. Uh, I have plenty of fun. Thank you very much. Oh, dear. Well, then what fun have you got in store for us today? Well, for your information, I'm going shopping with Michael. You know you mean shoplifting? Anyone home? In here. No interruption, anything, are we? No. We're just chatting. So all the shopping bags. I just bought some new things for the room. You were meant to be taking stuff back. Yeah, I did, and then I saw some more stuff. You got a problem with that? No, of course not, dearest, but now that you've finished emptying half of Manchester's department stores, how do you fancy picking up the sprogs? I can pick them up for you. You don't have to do that. I know. I want to. Who'd have thought that, eh? Two uses for her in one day. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show her. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Despite the collateral damage to the old joint bank account, I'm officially impressed. Not too poncy for you, then? No. No, you've definitely got an eye. Two as it goes, which is a bonus. It's Bethany not back. Now there'll be a while, yeah. What about Gail and Ronnie Biggs? I thought you were supposed to be taking her off somewhere. Oh, are you? So we got the house to herself, then. Should really make the most of it, shouldn't we? How do you mean? What do you think I mean? Oh, no, babe, I'm not really in the mood. Oh, come on. It's been ages, hasn't it? I think I've forgotten how to do it. David, don't. What, don't try and kiss you? You're my wife? Yeah, I know. Well, what's the problem? The problem is... I'm not like you. Well, what's that supposed to mean? Well, where are you going? Anywhere. As long as it's away from here. Whoa. Not now, Max. Me, it feels like someone's banging the drums in there. You all right? Yeah, apart from doing a thousand things at once. 
Right, well, you might as well get his coat off, cos his skull's short, burst pipe. Haha, uh -huh. very funny. No, I, I just saw Dev now. He's got a meeting with the bank, so I said we'd have him. Which means you said I'd have him. All right, you two? Well, I can ring Gran and tell her I need the morning off. It's fine. No, I don't mind. I'd rather hang out with you anyway. David, Audrey will scalp you. Go to work. All right, we'll meet back here for lunch, yeah? Right, you lot, coats off. Max, take him to pick a game or something. Kyla. Bye, David. Later, mate. Love you. Yeah, same. I asked you a question. Answer me. Mum, stop. You're evil. Do you hear me? Kylie. Pure Kylie. evil. Kylie, Kylie what? <gasps> Just leave us alone. Kylie, what's happened? Leave right, us listen, alone. Get away from them. Death. No. You've said enough. I think I should go around and take Addie and Asher some sweets. Oh, well, yeah, if you want Dev to have your head on a pole. Look, well, all this is my fault, you know. I just expected you to move in there like nothing had happened. It's more than that. He's my little boy. He always will be. I know, but I mean, everything he's been through, you know, and look at him, he's a survivor like his mum. You see, everything he's been through, I don't want him to be that kid. Then he won't be. Do you know what I was doing when I heard him shouting? And by the way, there wasn't a kid just calling out for help. That was a stomach churning, proper fear. Yeah, all right, you're just upsetting yourself now. David, I was sponging his mattress. He must have wet the bed. Yeah, still think he won't be that kid. He's living in the house where I killed his dad. Shh, just not that. If we stay here, he is going to find out. It's just a matter of when. He's having a kip. He's exhausted. I want us to move. To Barbados. <laughs> You're not right in your head, Carla. Well done, Doc. Of course I'm not. Look, we're not moving to bar flipping Bados, all right? It's not Mars. People who live there, people like my sister, you know, our kids' auntie. Yeah, well, they've got family here. Yeah, and we're wrecking their lives. Maybe you need to see someone. Don't you dare. They've all been caught up in this. Your mum, Sarah, Bethany. Bethany's fine. That kid is so far from being fine. And what about your sister? Is she going to be fine? And little Harry. Another kid dragged into this nightmare. <sighs> no, we just need to move on, all right? Just try and forget it ever happened. And then there's me and you. Max and Lily. All this damage. All because of me. No, it's because of Callum. Who brought him here? Before I rocked up, you were a normal family. D normal? What, with Gail's track record? <laughs> Who got pregnant by him? Who stirred it all up again, brought him back here to wreck all these lives? Who finished him off? Who's the reason that my kid is scared of his own shadow? Him! Him! Kylie, all right? Everything's because of him, and he got everything he deserved. There's only one way out of this. Mum? Oh, come here, mate. David's just going to put the dinner on. Why didn't you tell me you were scared? I thought you'd call me a baby. Well, that's because you're my baby. And you always will be. Even when you're married and you've got kids of your own. And you're dying for me to get lost. I'll always look after you. Be protecting you. Because that's what mums do. I look like I'm coping. Does Max? Look, I just want to make things right. And if we go, maybe we can. Or at least, you know, make things a lot less wrong. 
David, come on, this is best for everyone. What do you reckon? Well, you keep saying how you want to give the kids a chance of a normal life. Yeah, exactly. Right, no, just let me finish. Maybe being here is the most normal thing we can give them. And you can say what you want about Gail, and I'll say more than anyone, but she loves them kids. And they love her. I mean, from day one, she's treated Max like her own grandson, hasn't she? What, you don't think that's true? You told me not to butt in. Yeah, of course it's true. And then what about Sarah? I mean, we've already sent her off with the men in white coats. I mean, she's going to need us now more than ever. Well, you've just said it yourself. We're the reason she's there. You know, I feel almost as bad about that as... Look, if we go, right, we're just letting her deal with something what we did all by herself. Or we're giving her the chance to try and forget. Do you think she might be quite glad to see us go? A clean break. She deserves that more than any of us. But kids need family, babe. They do. And you want to drag them thousands of miles away from the one stable thing that's in their life. Look, I'm not saying that they won't miss everyone. I'll miss them too. But for everything they lose, they're getting sun and sandy beaches. Schoolmates that don't know every nasty word that's been said about us. And even better, you no know, nightmares or terrible memories lurking around every corner. Every door. And David, it's me and you that needs to be the most stable thing in their lives. You know, we might not always have been, but well, from now on we've got to be. And I can't do that here. All right, Bex, I'll speak to you in a bit. Bye, bye. You want a cup of tea? That was our Becky. She's up for it. Mm. You were hoping she was going to tell us where to go? Maybe. Babe, if we want a fresh start, this is our best shot. Mm. Is that a yeah? Yeah, I guess it is, yeah. Oh, David! Oh, I love you. I love you. But Barbados, though. Yes, Barbados! It's crazy. Well, yeah, it is, but... Well, this is me and you were talking about, so it's perfect. Yeah. I just don't the rest of the family feel the same way. <laughs> Taking people on? Brilliant. Thanks, Bex. No surprise for you. Oh, no, it sounds perfect. Yeah. OK, I'll let you go. It'll be costing you a fortune. OK, see you soon. Bye. Bye. She's up early. Oh, it's gone eight over there. Come on, then. What's the big surprise? Got some donuts to go over his lunch. That's it. That's the big surprise. I won't bother ringing the Gazette. I'm fine. I'll eat more by myself. Well, you left her. You know what I'm like? I'll only get jammed down my front. Besides, I've got my bikini to think of now. Yeah, well, you ain't got to worry about that for a while, have you? Haven't I? Bex reckons they're going to be expanding the spa at Danny's Resort. They're going to need more beauticians, more stylists. But we I... couldn't have timed it better, babe. But I... We're not even there yet. Yeah, but if we get cracking, we can be. Babe, we could be talking weeks. Weeks? Well, hopefully. I thought you were up for this. No, I, I am. I, I, I suppose I just feel better once I've told my mum, that's <sighs> all. Gail be fine. What do you think? She nearly flipped her wig when Nick said he was off to go live in Painton. If she loves it, she'll realise it's a fantastic opportunity. Well, I won't bet on it. Oh, we can't not do this. It feels like it's been throwing it down my whole life. And now I can finally chuck the umbrella and catch some rays. It's our time, babe. Yeah, I know, I know. It's gonna be amazing. Right, well, oh, you're just squashing me down, Oz. Oh, sorry. Okay. Look at that. Oh, hi. Hi. Yes, well, I thought the same as me. And <laughs> actually, he bought a packet of sweets, so we kept getting shushed. <laughs> so he said, it was blowed if he was gonna hang around to the interval before he could have another Maltese, so we licked it. Oh. You won't be doing it again, then? No, not the theatre, no. Yeah, but what about Freddie? Oh, oh. oh. Dear. Well, 
But a very pleasant afternoon. And if he was to ask me out again, I'd not say no. But as friends, obviously. Yeah, obviously. Oh, mm -hmm. don't you look at me like that. Like what? You know exactly <coughs> like what, <laughs> What's that? Nothing. I'm just stuck in the kettle. The I mean, believe it or not, but Gran's love life is not my favourite topic of conversation. Get lost. I know you, and I know when something's not right now. Spit it out. No, I don't care, but you've got a promise not to kick off. Say this now. We agreed we were going. I don't understand your problem. I just didn't want to make it a knee-jerk thing. I'll show you a knee-jerk thing if you don't explain yourself. Babe, talk to me. We've got nothing but bad memories here. Not just bad, flaming horrific. But we can leave all that behind, literally miles behind. I don't know what your problem is. I've not got a problem. I just wanted to surprise you. Yeah, we've done that all right. I meant in a good way. Look, if you must know, I've been speaking to the council about adopting Max. It should be pretty straightforward now Callum's out of the way. Oh, why didn't you say so? Because I wanted to surprise you. It, it takes a couple of months, apparently, and... Well, I didn't want to go to Barbados if we weren't all a, a proper family, you know, until it was official. You soppy beggar. Come here. <sighs> you know what? Mm. This is who I love. The kid who cried when his rabbit died, not the other bloke. <laughs> yeah, well, that other bloke's gone. Okay, for good, I promise. We don't have to be here to sort it out. We can do it from over there. Yeah, well, I just wanted it all done and dusted, but I suppose it doesn't matter. Well, it's going to matter to Max. He's going to be so chuffed. It's just going to be good things for you and me from now on, babes. We're going to go to Barbados and we're going to make the honeymooners jealous. <laughs> Who's going to Barbados? Hey, Mum. What are you planning on telling us? Well, it's happened really quickly. I mean, we've only just decided ourselves. And you didn't think I was worth consulting before you took my grandchildren away? Oh, look, Mum, we knew you wouldn't be happy about it, but we were hoping you'd see it from our point of view. And how about you seeing it from mine? Was this your doing? It was a joint decision. I don't know, you can be so selfish. Sarah needs your support. She needs the family to stick together and you're tearing it apart. Well, hopefully Sarah's on the mend. But yet, yeah, we'll talk to her, explain everything. I'm sure she'll understand that we're doing this for the kids' sake. Do they know? Why do you think she stuck them out in the garden? I mean, what are you going to do? Tell them it's a holiday and then break the news when they're on the plane? No, Mum, of course not. I mean, when everything's set, then we'll, you know, we'll sit them down and we can say the goodbyes. Yeah, to everything they've ever known. Friends, family, school. I mean, after everything they've been through, they need stability, not more upheaval. Bethany, will you take the kids with David for an ice cream or something? I suppose. We need to talk. Yeah, I intend to. One to one, mum to mum. Oh, well, she was totally cool. Yeah. You're a genius. <laughs> Where are you now? Just heading out the pub. Oh. <laughs> Something get that cracked up, don't we? Yeah. You haven't told the kids, have you? No, 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 no. Not without you. Oh, great. I can't wait to see the faces. Hang on, I think there might be someone kicking off at the kebab shop. One isn't there. Just come home. Yeah, I will. I'm just going to check that Gemma's all right first, OK? I'll see you in a minute. Just leave it! What's happened? I was worried about you. What? I'm sorry. No, it's, it's all right. It's all right, okay? You're going to be all right. Just stay with me. Help! Help, somebody! <laughs> oh, my God, what's going on? I don't know. Something at the kebab shop. Get an ambulance. <coughs> ambulance is on its way, babe, all right? You're going to be okay. Gemma. Gemma was hurt. Yeah, Luke's gone round there, all right? You, you just concentrate on yourself, all right? Just, just try and stay calm. Like you. 
You're gonna be all right. I know, babe, I know. <laughs> the ambulance is on its way. She's gonna be fine. It's gonna be all right. Who did this? I don't know. Just get mum. Oh. Oh. I've ruined everything. I've chucked it all away. I'm sorry. You've ruined nothing. He told me to leave it. I never listen. I should have listened to you more. Well, I'll remind you you said that. Oh, why do you have to go charging in? Because that's who you are, all right? You're the most bravest person I've ever met. No, I'm scared, David. I don't want to die. You're not going to die, all right? Not today, not for years. And you are brave. <clears throat> I'm just a gobby cat. No, you're not. Well, you'll stand up to anybody if you think you're right. I mean, who else would move halfway across the world at the drop of an hat, all right? I mean, it's mad, but it doesn't matter as long as we're together. I just want to be with you and the kids. You should still go to Barbados. No, we're all going to go, all right? All four of us, we're all going to get on that plane together, all right? And all this... All this darkness and grey, it'll just be a bad memory. Right? Because from now on, we're going to live our life in colour, all right? You and me. And we'll be able to take the kids snorkeling as well. I mean, Kai, Kai, you should see the fishes there. They're amazing. I mean, there's oranges and, and yellows, spots and stripes. I've, I've been looking at them on the internet. Max a liar, because he can paint them. He loves to... Oh. I know, hang on, hang on, Kai, hang on, all right? It won't be much longer. Is she still conscious? Yeah, she is. How is Gemma? Uh. She's being looked after. Roy, well, do you have, like, uh, a dressing or anything? Uh, I don't think there's much we can do that you're not already doing. Keep applying pressure. Where's the ambulance, Roy? It, it's, it's been called. Try and keep her engaged. Focus. It's important that you talk. She's gonna be fine, she's gonna be all right. As far as doctors go, you make a great hairdresser. Hi, girl. Oh, no. I'm really sorry for everything that I've put oh, you through. Don't be sorry. And don't you tire yourself. I don't blame you. If Max had brought someone like me on, I'd be well disappointed too. Yeah. That's ridiculous. You're my family and I couldn't be more glad. And you love my son. Yeah. And that's all that really matters. Yeah. I do love him. And I love you. Yeah. All right? But you're going to be fine. Yeah. I'm going to be fine. You will, Kai. You'll be okay. I want you to know that even though sometimes stuff went wrong, you made me so happy. <laughs> Even though I did my best to screw it up. You never gave up on us. And I'm not giving up on you now. All right, nor are you, so stop talking no, like this. No. I want to say it while I still can. You tell the kids that I love them. I'm going to miss them so much. I had too much to be proud of, but them too. At least I did something right, yeah? You're going to be the great dad you always was. And you're going to carry on for them. You're going to carry on for us, do you promise me? Yeah, I do, but I don't need to, all right? The kids need you. If they had to lose one of us, I'm glad it was me. You were always better, right? <laughs> you tell him that I tried. <laughs> and, and whatever mistakes that I've made, 
Make sure you tell him that I never, ever stop loving him. Okay? You're not going to leave us. No, babe. No, I'm not. Not ever. We were laughing. Like a couple of hours ago in the salon, he's in It's just another day. And it's always just another day. Those poor kids. Is someone with them? Just stay awake, just look at me. Stay awake, just look at me. I'm gonna... So just keep looking at me. Tell the kids what I said. Please. Call me to Stop it, Megan. That was the David Platt I love. The kid who cried when his rabbit died. The other block. What? You're not gonna bury me in the garden. <laughs> Only you can say that now. I could only say it to you. <laughs> Carly, they're here. Seventeen fifty seven. I'm very sorry, sir. Yeah. Can I go over to her? What? They need to speak to the police officer in charge. It's a, it's a crime scene. She's my wife! She's not a crime scene! on her own. David, they've got to do this. We no, want no. the animal who did this court. We have to let the police do their job. She's beautiful, isn't she? Yes. She is. You know, sometimes I used to watch her sleep. <laughs> and she'd catch me and she'd call us a freak. <laughs> I didn't care. I used to think... Everything that was going on at home, all the aggro, 
It was worth it. She was worth it. Why won't? wasn't there to protect you. I'm sorry I was too late. Come back. Please. I just want to cuddle. Say goodbye. 